The temperature load right at the top of the tested materials is 300 degrees Celsius in accordance with the zero measurement at a height of 1.5 meters. This concerns the first phase of a fire before flashover occurs. At this temperature load, PIR creates a double temperature development in comparison with rock wool and EPS. The temperature developments are closer to each other for the sandwich panels due to the protective effect of the metal skins. After conclusion of the test, the rock wool sheet is still entirely intact. A large part of the insulation of PIR and EPS has burned away. Rock wool, uncovered or sandwich, barely contributes to smoke development, while PIR does. The steel cladding protects the PIR sandwich from direct contact with flames. Because of this, the temperature load is too low to gasify and ignite the PIR insulation. EPS already melts or burns at a low temperature load. The EPS melts because of the metal skins on the sandwich panels. As long as the EPS is enclosed, the temperature and thus the smoke development remain low. The following fire properties of materials are of great importance for proper evaluation of fire propagation risks. Calorific potential the energy content of the material used, also called the fire load. The capacity released and the speed with which this takes place. The fire reaction speed and the start of secondary fires in places that were not taken into account. The contribution to the temperature development. The chimney effects and ensuing pressure differences as a consequence of the heat produced by the hot, non-combusted flue gases fire propagation due to scattering of non-combusted flue gases and burning droplets. Fire propagation due to heat radiation where ignition takes place with no flame contact. The SBI only provides information about fire reaction at a low temperature load of about 300 degrees Celsius at 1.5 meters above the burner in accordance with the zero measurement. The room corner provides information about fire reaction at higher temperature loads up to about a thousand degrees Celsius at 2.4 meters above the burner in accordance with the zero measurement. Thus, the room corner test is a better representation of what actually happens in a fire that's developed. The room corner reference test, EN 14390. In this test setup, the time flashover occurs determines how quickly a product will start contributing to the fire. If it happens within two minutes, the products are designated Fire Class E. If it happens in the period between two and ten minutes, the product is in Class D. While the capacity growth must also remain below a certain value less than or equal to 7.5 kilowatts per second. At a nearly identical escaping flue gas temperature for PIR and EPS, the radiation levels differ significantly. The EPS test was halted prematurely due to controllability issues. Rock wool is practically identical to the zero measurement. Products that result in flashover after 10 minutes in the second phase of the test, using a flame with a capacity of 300 kilowatts, make a limited contribution to fire propagation and are designated fire class C. The capacity increase during the fire is also checked. This must be less than or equal to 1.5 kilowatts per second. The capacities released for PIR and EPS sandwich panels are substantially higher than those for rock wool sandwich panels. Products that do not result in flashover during the 20 minute room corner test, or in other words, do not reach a fire capacity of 1000 kilowatts, are products that do not or only slightly contribute to fire propagation. These products are class A or B. 
Flashover occurs within 20 minutes in the room corner area for both PIR and EPS with or without protective steel plating. This means that these products will contribute to the further development of a fire. The graph shows that the released capacity and radiation level in particular increase for PIR within a short time. When using 30 square meters of PIR in a room corner, a large capacity is released, more than 2,000 kilowatts in two minutes, as is a radiation level that's many times more than the maximum permitted level of 15 kilowatts per square meter. All building products in the EU member states must eventually be provided with CE marking. The CE marking is a type of product label or conformity mark that indicates that the product in question has been tested in accordance with the European specifications. One of the properties stated on the CE marking is the Euroclass for fire reaction. Since the 1st of January 2009, sandwich panels can also be provided with CE marking. CE marking will be mandatory for sandwich panels from the 1st of October 2010. The legally required class of the material behavior in case of a fire is the Euro class. The Euro class assigned does not show the entire fire hazard because the Euro class is determined by carrying out small scale tests. The more extensive room corner test was the basis for this. This larger scale test gives a more complete picture of reality, especially also when the fire is bigger. This also applies if a product is classified in the Euro class under the condition of certain assembly and processing regulations. Sandwich panels and roof structures with combustible insulation, for example, can pose a higher risk in practice than one would assume on the basis of the Euro class. A large number of scientific publications point to this difference. The SBI mainly tests the outer surface, while the room corner also tests the material behind the outer surface, for example, the combustibility of the insulation behind a steel plate. Heated plastic insulation will release combustible gases, causing the steel plate to be deformed. Combustible gases escape through the joints. On roofs, these gases initially escape from the heated side, which is inside the building. The combustible gases enter the building not only due to sloppy installation, but also via extra screw holes and pipe lead-throughs. Thick smoke will accumulate at the top of the room and after sufficient heating will abruptly start igniting. This is the notorious flashover. Another problem with the SBI test is that it only tests vertically. So this test is not representative for a roof. Just think of the falling burning droplets. In addition, only a fire from the inside is simulated, while the source of a fire on the outer wall could, for example, also be an adjacent building or a fire in a stack of pallets placed against the outer wall. The room corner reference test is based on EN 14390 and consequently may deviate from the Euro class in which it's officially categorized. The room corner test results show that rock wool products are differentiated from PIR and EPS insulation in this test due to the incombustibility of the insulation material. Since currently the construction regulations do not always show such a difference due to the omission of large scale tests, Opting for rock wall insulation means opting for a significantly lower fire safety risk in practice. For fire safety engineering, knowledge of the actual fire behavior to be expected from the building shell is essential if the fire expansion and smoke production are not to be underestimated. In practice, combustible insulation is increasingly sealed up in the construction components. In general, calculation models that are supposed to predict fire development do not take this into account. If this is the case, the use of these combustible insulation materials is irresponsible. The extent of heat radiation in a fire is calculated by the sum of the permanent and variable fire load. Burning flue gases are not only discharged vertically, but also in other directions, sometimes almost horizontally, due to the wind velocity effect. The extent of heat radiation on adjacent roofs and outer walls thus depends on the weather 
and can end up far above the limit value of 15 kilowatts per square meter. Because of this, the surface of roofs and outer walls of adjacent fire compartments and adjacent buildings can start to ignite and plastic insulation materials can burn. Such a fire scenario is described in European Standard EN 1187 Part 3, for instance. Rock wool in exterior walls and roofs stops the heat radiation of a fire in the building, giving the fire brigade more time to prevent the fire from spreading to adjacent compartments and adjacent buildings. A possibly wrong choice of insulation material or other construction materials may have far-reaching consequences in view of the new Housing Act. To wit, the expansion of the Housing Act in 2007, by the principle of care, placed a direct additional responsibility on the owner, builder and user of a building for the effect of a building on the safety and health of users and people in the vicinity. In short, the owner must ensure that a building complies with the building and use decree. Acting in violation of the principle of care may even be a criminal offence. Designers, principals and building owners must remain alert when assessing the fire safety of buildings. So choose certainty. Choose Rockwool made by Rockwool. Fire safety deserves top priority.